apartheid made University of the Free State completely white. I had to have a PhD to be appointed, mm. right? Mm. And when I walked inside, there are colleagues who've been teaching here for 20 years without a PhD. Colonial systems, we must ridicule them. We must uh, laugh at the craziness and the stupidity of racism, mm. whiteness and mm. coloniality. I'm not a racist. I teach about racism, sure. the difference. You have white students who don't want to be taught about racism. Mm. Mm. When you mm. teach racism, they go tell their parents. Yeah. Racism has no future. Yeah. Whiteness has no future. Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. Today, I'm extremely excited to be joined by Dr. Pedro Mzileni. Doc, mm -hmm. another episode where you have to be a doctor to be in the episode. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Sizwe. Uh, thank you for the invite. No, it's, it's wonderful yeah. to always be able to speak to our country's mm. rising intellectual voices. Mm -hmm. And you're certainly one of those. But uh, you've been through a really concerning and difficult period. Yeah. In my view, you've been unduly persecuted mm -hmm. for talking about racism, talking about colonialism. Mm. Tell us about what you've been through at the University of the Free State and mm. uh, where do we start with the story? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let, me, let me maybe start at the beginning and go with the sequence mm. so that I remember things because I attach things to dates. Mm. Uh, so I got appointed there November 2022. Mm. So you could say now it's almost, a, it's a year. I've just finished a year sure. of being there. This whole drama took wow. place within a year. Yeah. Very eventful year. Yeah. So in 2022, I arrived, I took over, and um, they gave me a first year program, sure. sociology, uh, to teach. And How also, many students? It's over 800. It's over 800 wow. per semester. Yeah. So if you combine both, you're talking close to 1,600. And there are also students also in South Campus. Mm. which is the mini campuses uh, of the institution. Sure. I mean, that's quite a way to start. One day we'll even talk about the way you uh, get given 800 students as you start, <laughs> but we're, yeah. we're not even there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I was given this festival program, Yeah. close to a thousand students. Mm. And uh, the attitude I could feel around the faculty uh, already was that first years are usually this neglected mm, uh, area, which mm. is considered labor intensive. Very so true. everyone wants to run away from it. Mm. People just want to publish, focus on promotions yeah. and first years with this huge number, just an inconvenience. Mm. So when I took over the, the program, I said, uh, I need to, 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 to shift that, uh, uh, that, uh, that mentality and see how can we actually make the first year level, a very exciting mm. uh, level. Mm. How can I construct knowledge that is relevant to them? These yeah. are 18 year olds, 17 year olds, 19 year olds, mm. fresh from high school, but they are not kids. Uh, they are not um, stupid. These, 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 these students have lived for 18 years of their lives in communities yeah. where they saw poverty, unemployment and challenges at first hand. In fact, for them to qualify in a university, it took a lot of resilience out of them. So they do have languages, knowledges within them. And how best can I, you know, stimulate that curiosity and that excitement for mm. them to love knowledge mm. so that mm. when you walk into the classroom, no matter how many they are, you just fall in love with them, sure. connect with them and also make them also love what they do. Mm. So how do I make education become something beyond just a transmission of information, sure. but how can I make it meaningful to them so that they wake up in the morning and see value mm. in coming to class, even if there's no attendance register, they must just come. Yeah. So I, I was given the textbook, I was given the course outline mm. uh, from the previous years, and I tried to improvise 
uh, within it, looking at theorists like William E.P. Du Bois. Um, I also, because Du Bois is, um, you know, a Pan-African mm. uh, groundbreaking scholar, you could easily fit in. Uh, you go there, you could fit in, uh, you know, Bernard Makubane, sure. uh, Kimberly Crenshaw, Bell Hooks, Pumla Gola, all these mm. amazing black intellectuals who have shaped uh, the social sciences as we know it uh, yeah. today. Yeah. And the textbook, they still use textbooks at, mm, at, mm, the, at mm. that uh, institution. Mm, mm, instead that's of, quite common. Yeah, instead of reading. So uh, the textbook fortunately had something on decoloniality. Yeah. Uh, just as, I think it was about two pages. Mm, mm, mm. But I took it and I attached Walter Mignolo's work there, uh, Sabelon Tlofu Kacheni. Mm. And then here we were in February to, to begin the course. Sure. I think within... Within a week, on mm. my third class, the class was full. Sure. It was full. They were enjoying the the content yeah. I was giving in class. Yeah. And I was very frank. I called things by their names. You mm. know, uh, mm. blackness was blackness. Whiteness was whiteness. Sure. Um, and I could see also there were students who don't even do my course who would come mm. to... Uh, to class because the engagement was so warm and relevant mm. uh, to them. Mm. So that was the temperature sure. at the beginning. And I, I could feel it in my veins that I'm adding value. This so is this was becoming the class to the class to go to? Yeah, it was becoming the class to, to attend. Uh, mm. The word was going out uh, in the campus that there's, it, it feels like there's a new sheriff in town yeah. uh, who's offering a new language uh, of... Uh, of, of teaching that is meaningful to the sure. to, to, to students in the test I would ask them about um, you know the race question the class question in the mm. reference to the township and you could see their emotions um, yeah. their opinions in the tests and, and in the assignments and that they were writing this is first year sociology by the way just just to clarify mm. yeah. first year sociology and and of course mm. I mean of course those questions would emerge you can't be studying sociology in South Africa mm. and not be introduced yeah, to yeah. questions of race, to questions of class, yeah, because, and various other questions. Mm, that's like the point of, that's of the, the point. discipline. That's the point. Sociology is in a university for a reason. Sure. It's the conscious of the social sciences. Yeah. It's, a, it's a critical study of society. And what society do we have? We have mm. a society crafted out of racism, we have a society crafted out of violent forms of patriarchy. You know, we have a society constructed out of land dispossession, land theft, you know, a displacement of indigenous black people, pushing them into poverty, pushing them into a system of racial capitalism where to be black is to be a laborer. And that system is not a system of 500 years ago, is it? You know, you don't see it 200 years ago. You see today, you know, the person who clean the toilets, the people who sweep the streets, the people who clean... Uh, bedrooms in the hotels are black people, are black women, you know. Sure. That system is not natural. It's a manifestation of firstly dispossessing these people of their land and making them therefore to see their hands as labor power and as the only way for them to make a livelihood, you know. That is why therefore the most demeaning forms of labor are done by black people. So in sure. sociology you've got to call such things by their names. Absolutely. That is the purpose of sociology sure. craft out society the way it is yeah. and give it uh, uh, to the students and they were enjoying it mm. you know right yeah mm. so let's 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 get back to 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 the story so you know you're a, a new lecturer you've you've got your phd mm. by the way one day we'll talk about what it means to have a phd and how yeah. black academics have to have their phds yeah at the and, door before and you often in. white academics mm. don't no but but that's a, a story for, <laughs> for another day. Um, uh, so, so you come in, you've got all the credentials, you're teaching and you want to do a great job. Yes. You're doing a great job. Yes. By the way, this is a service to universities, <clears throat> you know, young lecturers teaching first year classes that mm -hmm. other senior academics often <clears throat> don't want to because it's so much work. Yeah. And the class is humming, it's buzzing, you're having interesting conversations. Yeah. What happens next? <clears throat> well, I come from Nelson Mandela University. The University of the Free State, I've never been there before. Were you SRC president as well, yes. by the way? Yes, I was yeah. SRC president at Nelson Mandela University. Um, I grew up there from first year up to PhD level. Sure. So 
the culture of the place is in my veins. Mm. And at Nelson Mandela University, you would know, um, yeah. it's it's a paradigm of activist mm. scholars. Mm. So there, you are not just a student for exams and classrooms uh, or, or attending classes, but your activism outside the classroom is actually what is encouraged in the university. Because sure. that's where you get to grow and broaden uh, your thinking and your horizon to be yeah. a complete citizen, sort of. So scholars in that university also are not people fixated uh, in, 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 the, in the scholarship in the classroom, mm. but they're also activists outside. So engaging in public discourse is a normal way of life as a scholar at the National University. In mm. fact, the university even encourages scholars to criticize the university itself. Sure. So the university is not just your employer, mm. but it's also a terrain where as a scholar, you must identify wrong things mm. about it. And that's what all good universities should mm. do. Promote so that critical discussion, yes, exactly. reflection. That's that's the project of the university. Mm, mm. So universities as organizations operating in a capitalist market that we have today, they've got to open room for scholars to even critique mm. the institutions themselves mm. so that we keep them on track. They yeah. must be kept on track. They must be kept in check so that they continuously become institutions that are serving the public. Yeah, because absolutely. if you don't do that, they mm. can easily tilt to the right and serve sure. imperialist sure. interests against the students, against staff members, and so on. So yeah. Mandela allowed that. So yeah. when I came to University of the Free State... Can, can we stop? Because you keep saying interesting things. So let me... <laughs> okay. and, and we're going to keep going uh, with, the, with the narrative. Yeah, sure. No worries. Um, but mm. that's what academic freedom actually means. You mm. know, it's this buzzword, academic freedom, yeah. which is often invoked to protect privilege in universities or yeah. protect entrenched interests. Mm. Academic freedom means the freedom to criticize your own institution, yes. to have even that freedom. Mm. And that freedom has built the university as such an entrenched institution. Spot on. Look, there are no holy cows in the terrain of knowledge. You know, sure. knowledge institutions are called sites of struggle mm. uh, for that reason, you know. Mm. So you've got to criticize the very same institution that you're in, sure. the very faculty that you're in, mm. the very department, mm. Uh, your own colleagues, even your mm. own self. Mm. You've got to sure. question what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. You and know? be ready for others to criticize and you. And be ready and, also and to be yeah. criticized. You must sure. be open and just be ready for robust engagement mm. in everyday life. Mm. And mm. if you don't have a thick skin for that, you yeah. shouldn't be working in a university. Absolutely. You, know? you must Absolutely. go work in a farm where <laughs> your views won't be contested. You know? <laughs> Otherwise, for so long as you are an academic citizen, sure. everything that you do and say and write must be up for critique. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So, so mm. right. So, <clears throat> where to? Where to? So, you're teaching the course. Mm. Everything's going well. You're sparking thought. Yeah. Uh, what next? So, my problem started on a Friday, 14th May, mm. 2023. The vice chancellor is presenting Vision 130 yeah. of the University of the Free State. I'm saying all these things because they're public knowledge. They're yeah, sure, there. sure. So, the vice chancellor presents this vision. Uh, by the way, I read that vision, I think, three or four days when I after I got appointed. Mm. You can Google it, you'll find it on the internet. Sure. So I, so the first thing that surprised me, this vision is only 12 pages. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've, if you've read university visions in South Africa, but I'm a, I'm a very committed student of mm. vision statements of universities mm. because they shape not only university life, but public life as a whole. So yeah. I, I really pay attention to them. The Vision 2020 document of Nelson Mandela University was about 71 pages. Mm. I don't know at UCT or Vets. Sure. Yeah, I remember one which was How, probably 100 or so pages back when I was SLC you know, president yeah. at UCT. So these are quite big documents. But this one was only 12. Mm. And I only read it af after a, a coffee break, you know. And it's written in a very strange way. It's written like a corporate market document. It doesn't feel like an academic scholarly document grounded uh, in the social sciences where it's supposed to originate from, sure. you know? And I picked up four things. Firstly, it seems like there's an effort to decrease black students. Because mm -hmm. in virtual the free state, since, I would say, since the merger two and four, even worse after first must fall, st students have increased, especially black students. Mm, mm. I think the university now has close to 40,000 students. Right. Now, in this document, but you won't find what I'm saying written in, 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 in concrete, 
clear sentences. Yeah. You have to look for it in the English, mm. you know. Mm, mm. So in the English, it says the agenda basically is to decrease black students because right. they are saying, one, they want to increase the APS points going to uh, their 130th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So University of the Free State in 2034 will be 130 years old. So when they get 2034, they want to get there with less undergraduate students. Sure. They want to get there with increased APS points. They want to cut off the extended studies uh, uh, program. Mm -hmm. Just on these three things alone, who sure. are you talking about? Mm. They're talking about black students, you know? Yeah. And then they also say they want to boost the, the university up the rankings, right? And you know, rankings are, are unscientific. They don't exist. Sure. You very, know? very subjective. Very based subjective. On, yeah. Many universities in this country and across the world have questions mm. and dismissed uh, the item of rankings. Mm. Mm. Nelson Mandela University, Rhodes University, they don't participate in the rankings. Sure. Because how do you rank universities in an unequal world? I mean, if you do medicine in Walter Sassoli University, even if you are supervised by the best mm. medical practitioners there, Sure. And I just happened to do my medicine at UCT, right? When we carry both our our medicine degrees and we go to this unequal world that we know, you get automatically kicked out of the conversation mm. because you come from a lowerly ranked university. No, sure. Sure. There's, right? there's much to be said about the critique mm. of those rankings. So they don't reflect the quality of yeah. knowledge. They don't even serve the public. So so, so you made this critique of, of the vision. Mm. And I'm assuming that wasn't met with with great uh, satisfaction by mm. the university or? Oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Mm. Even in the room, you could feel the weight, the silence mm. as I was speaking, but I didn't care. Mm. I just wanted to make my message across. That video sure. is available on YouTube of, okay. the, of the Invest. Okay. So we'll, I will share a link in the description mm. of this episode. So I basically said to the, to the vice chancellor, I think you are trying to appease white uh, feelings, white anxieties with this vision. You want to attract white people back for what, you know, because the because what what he doesn't understand or the people wrote it. I'm just going to attach him because he's the one selling it. Mm -hmm. What they don't understand is what made the University of the Free State white, says from mm -hmm. the onset. Mm -hmm. It is the it is the population manipulation control policy called apartheid. Apartheid made University of the Free State completely white. But it was being white in an African country. So once you have white spaces in an African country, it can only be the manipulation control policy called apartheid that makes you achieve that. Now, when apartheid is declared to be dismantled in 1994, what are you going to have? You are naturally going to have a black people dominating in all spaces of public life because they are the majority of the population anyway. White people in South Africa are only 7% of the population. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Black people, you know how many we are? <clears throat> we are 82% uh, of the population. So naturally, right, in any university, in any business, you're supposed to have black people as the majority because you are in an African country. Now, the problem with the University of the Free State they think that the arrival uh, of black people suddenly creates white anxieties for them. It's as if they are losing something. Mm. And that's probably the problem, says so a conversation we need to have, you know, that many white parents, many white parents, they were not prepared for a black democracy. I like how Professor Andre Kitt puts this point. And them not being prepared for a black democracy, they've also socialized their children to this unpreparation of a black democracy. So it's as if now to be white, you must either exist in a small corner of being white or go to Australia. You, know? you must just not coexist with the black people. You must just not be ready to be under the supervision of black people. You must do all means necessary to maintain white spaces, right? And that socialization of racism is at the core of the anxieties you find with the arrival of many black people at the University of the Free State. So the arrival of black people at the University of the Free State is not looked at as a positive 
progressive outcome of a democratization of society is looked at as a threat. You even hear it in conversations informally that it's as if the arrival of black people has lowered the standards. Mm. But you ask yourself, where were these standards? Because when I got there, I had to have a PhD to be appointed, mm. right? Mm. And when I walked inside, there are colleagues who've been teaching here for 20 years without a PhD. Mm. In fact, the very same vision says we need to increase the number of staff members with PhDs in the next 10 years. Why are you increasing <laughs> well, PhDs I if, if there was a quality? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. it shows you that uh, the standards have been low anyway. Mm. And now mm. that the, the higher education environment is becoming more competitive, sure. PhDs now are now required in the space yeah. and we are the ones demanded mm. to arrive already carrying them. Okay, so so <clears throat> that's where my problem. So that was the that, critique that day. I criticized, and, it, and it, since then, it sounds to me obviously I don't know all the inner workings of UFS, but a mm. perfectly fair critique. I'm sure there may be people who have a different view, and that's that's what the academic that's project is all about. But that that it's a fair critique, and it's mm. a crucial critique. Mm. And it's a critique that the the university, I would assume, should at least have been alive to. Yeah. So so what what happens next? Now you've You've done <clears throat> a fairly normal thing of voicing yeah. your concerns about the vision of the university and its its mm. effect on uh, black students. Yeah. Where where do we go next? Because the story gets gets deeper. It gets deeper because that Friday, um, <clears throat> whether the vice chancellor knows this or not, it's my interpretation sitting here, right? So after criticizing on Friday, on Monday I got the first letter of charges. Mm. The charge was that um, I've written on Twitter that uh, the, the everyone in the gender center seems to be getting jobs except black women. So mm. we have an African gender center there. Mm. <clears throat> okay. So they said that statement is false and it's 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 going to st to 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 wrangle racial tensions. Mm. That's what they say. And who said this? Who brought these charges? And well, the charges were brought to me by my HOD. Right. He came to my office carrying a letter that you have been charged. Yeah. So I asked him, okay, why am I being charged for tweeting this uh, this critique? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we'll put the tweet up in this video so people can see it. Yeah. Mm. So then. Three days later, mm. I get another. And just for context for those listening on the podcast, the tweet was it was it was a criticism that there weren't enough black people, black voices in a center that's supposed to study uh, Africa. Yes, yes, yes. That 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 that, that was the tweet. But you, you know, most sometimes mm. uh, you, you you say these things at first value, sure, and then they and then they would go dig up the facts mm. to say what you are saying is false sure but you're not listening to the argument i'm mm. trying to bring mm. yeah yeah you know? sure sure so let's leave that yeah. one so cool. three days later i get into a debate with jonathan jansen on twitter mm -hmm. so one one of the people says on twitter says well jonathan jansen because because there was this issue at the unisa mm -hmm. where it was threatened to be put at administration so jonathan jansen tweets that UNISA must be placed in administration. So I respond to him mm. that I say, you are very committed in calling for black universities to be put under administration. But whenever bad governance takes place in a white institution like Stellenbosch, you hardly call for them to be placed under administration. So other users come in and then they say to him, by the way, Professor Jonathan Janssen, you are the last person to talk anything concerning governance in higher education because at the University of Free State, you exonerated white students sure. who made black mothers, black workers drink urine mm. at that institution in the rates incident mm. in term eight. So I retweeted that. The following morning, I got suspended. Right, for, suspended from the university. Suspended from, from the university. Mm. And mm. I was taken to a, 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 a disciplinary, disciplinary hearing. Mm. Before I could get there, the charges increased from mm. two charges to three and four. Mm. Charge three was that I've changed the the cover page of my study guide. Mm. Uh, without uh, permission, I should use uh, study guides that have university branding. <laughs> then, yeah. then charge four was that when the HOD brought the charges to me, yeah. uh, I was insolent. 
uh, okay. to towards him. Mm. So you could so you could see. Mm. So I got suspended for, for about f- six to eight weeks. Mm. I went into the disparity hearing, you know, mm. and uh, and then I won uh, the hearing. Sure. The commissioner found me not guilty in uh, in three of those charges. Okay, and then on the first one, yeah, about the the gender center, yeah, I apologized because they were okay. saying it's not true that there are no black women uh, in the in the. As, uh, okay, I said, okay, okay, fine, yeah, uh, fine. I'm sorry. Sure. So I was, uh, uh, so I apologized uh, yeah. for, 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 for that one. Yeah. And yeah. I was given rehabilitation. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> even there, I'm, you don't have to say anything, but I, you know, if we, if we're going to start making ad- academics apologize for every tweet that they put out, uh, and, you know, again, freedom of speech is is wonderful when it's protecting privilege, but mm. an academic freedom is wonderful when it's protecting privilege. But yeah. if this is the precedent we're going to set, that we're going to haul people to disciplinary hearings for for every tweet, you know, let's shut the university down now. Because you're going to have to look at millions of tweets mm-hmm. over many different years. And which ones do you select and which ones don't you? But anyway, I, I don't want you to talk about it because it might mm. be. But right, I want to know who was behind this move because already it's it's sounding to me like... There was some plan somewhere that actually, you know what, this this lecturer who speaks too much, mm-hmm. says too many difficult things needs to be yeah. targeted. At that stage, did you feel that that, that was happening? And, and yeah, yeah who, who's behind this? That's what of I Of course, there was a coordinated yeah. program somewhere that we need to deal uh, with this lecture. Mm. You know, uh, we need to deal with him. <clears throat> And you know, part of the conditions mm. when I was suspended for this hearing was that I mustn't talk about the details of hmm. uh, this hearing to anyone. Mm. You know, don't speak to the third party and and and, wow. and all those things. And <clears throat> look, there are people who appeared in the hearing mm. because you can't just press charges and yeah. it's an invincible face mm. driving mm. the hearing. The people who press the charges must mm. come forward, mm. and I saw them. Hmm. You know. Um, people very close. You'll be very surprised, mm. you know. So July, yeah, I came back sure. to my job. So now they've they've basically shown these charges were you you you, you defeated these charges. I defeated You're those back. charges. They were You're frivolous. Yeah. In fact, the presiding officer even asked, "Why did you suspend him? Yeah. You suspended him Absolutely. for retweeting facts." Yeah, yeah. You suspended him for changing a study guide. Mm. I mean, come on, yeah. You suspended him for an insolence that is not true. Yeah. yeah. Why did you suspend him? Sure, yeah. sure. So, so the university's effectively been embarrassed, in my words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now, finally, we can get back to the actual teaching, right? And get back to work now. Yeah. So July, I, c- I come back. Uh, when I when I when I come back um, mm. in July. I have a conversation with my HOD first. I, I said to him, look, I need to get back to my job. Sure. Back back to all the duties I was doing. Mm. But I need you to go to colleagues. Tell them that I'm innocent. I've done nothing wrong. In fact, I was the one who was wronged. Secondly, tell colleagues who was wrong. Right? Mm. He didn't do that. Mm. Mm. I also said to him, tell the tutors, because the university, by the way, has a strange system where as a lecturer, mm. tutors get appointed for you. Yeah, 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 sure. You don't appoint them. Mm. Again, that was my f- first strange experience, because I don't know how as a lecturer you can hunt with dogs that are not yours. You go to hunt with your own dogs, you know? So, but I, but I said, okay, maybe it's because I'm still new. Mm. I will appoint my own uh, tutors. And the issue with tutors that are not yours is you have your own way of teaching. Mm. You have your own approach. You have your own way of asking questions. You have your own way of marking. No matter how much you try to grill to them that this is how things I want them to be done, they do the the, 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 the total opposite. Sure, sure. Right? And uh, I ended up deciding that now that is the second semester, mm. right? Because of the things I heard in the hearing, right? Because of the people that came into the hearing, mm. I'm going to mark all those 800 scripts myself. Mm. 
sure. this semester. I'm My not going to give them to anyone because I don't trust anyone anymore, mm. right? Um, I'm going to continue teaching the way I was teaching. Yeah. I'm going to be so dedicated to my work, the way I've always been dedicated, mm. Mm. but I'm just going to be more cautious now because clearly there are people who are out yeah. to attack me, including people I'm expected to work with. Mm. So July, I resume my work. Oh, so I said to the HOD, so go tell people who, who was wrong. Tell them I'm innocent. Tell mm. them I've done nothing wrong. Mm. Because the the feeling now in the faculty and in the department was, yeah. was, was as if I'm a moron. I'm, a, mm. Mm. I'm, I'm this... Uh, dangerous person sure yeah, yet yeah. i've done absolutely nothing wrong yeah i've just been wearing my emotions on my sleeve mm. doing my job properly mm. he doesn't do that so i get into second semester mm. and then probably i taught the first class i taught the second one mm. again the classes are full students are coming in huge numbers mm. Mm. Then Ndandu Sindane, yeah. who is a lecturer in excellent the law faculty. Excellent legal, academic, and lecturer. Mm, excellent, yeah. excellent scholar. I love, I love his work. Mm, man. I love mm. him, the person that he is. He's just a brilliant scholar. Yeah, yeah. He's in the law faculty in the university. Yeah, sure. So he invites me to come give a guest lecture titled Coloniality, Social Justice, and Constitutionalism. Mm. This was on the 25th uh, of July. Sure. So... Once again, just to stop there, mm. that's such interesting innovation. A law lecturer bringing in a sociology lecturer, mm -hmm. inviting a class to consider what are the social questions beyond the narrow legal strictures of the Constitution, yes. you know, that we should be considering in our country right now. That's what I would hope is happening at mm. universities. Mm. Look, me and Dan, or even um, Nombula Loshange, She's my colleague in the mm. social department. Mm. We are young, mm. very energetic, so committed to our students. Yeah. We introduce them to innovations because we know what is going on in society. Sure. Sure. One dimensional solutions don't work. Mm. You need the multidisciplinary approaches mm. to these mm. problems we have. Yeah. Yeah. So Ndando calls me as a sociologist to go give a guest lecture in his second year LLB student class. Sure. So when I get this, is there's about 300 students in the room. Mm. Only tree are white. Not because mm. I was noticing the tree, mm. but the attack of Afrifora made me try now to remember mm. were the white people in the room. Yeah. Wait, so, this is the first time you've mentioned Afriforum. Mm. Where where did they where did they come into the picture? Oh they come into this This is where they come now. Yeah, this, okay. is, this okay. is where they come into so the, the picture. The subsequent, mm, mm, so mm, the subsequent mm. attack, right, right. Yeah. So when I get to this guest lecture, yeah. Um on the twenty fifth of July. So the lecture is coloniality, social justice, constitutionalism. So mm. I give the lecture. I mm. speak for about an hour and 30 minutes, mm. right? And then the last 30 minutes was for question and answer. That is the yeah. best lecture I've ever given mm. in my life. Mm. I, I felt it in my soul after giving it that this was the best one I've yeah. ever given. Yeah. And the class was so overwhelmingly engaging. Mm. Everyone was... was 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 laughing because I, I include humor mm. when I teach. You see, colonial systems, we must ridicule them. We must uh, laugh at the craziness and the stupidity of racism, mm. whiteness, and mm. coloniality. So when I'm in the class, I make sure that in the middle of the lesson, people must laugh at this nonsense mm. called whiteness, right? Sure. And, that, and students love that, mm. you know? Mm. So... After the class ended, it was difficult for me to leave because after I gave the lecture and I said, thank you very much, students started to come to the front. Yeah. I was so overwhelmed by them. They were asking me questions, taking my contact details. It was, it was so nice. Mm. They also wrote a test after that, uh, that, that, that lecture. Now, when that lecture ended, three weeks later, I now get invited by Sasco to give a public lecture in the in front of the whole university yeah. on African socialism. And the poster got released, I think, two days before. Now, the night before, as I'm preparing for this lecture mm. on African socialism, my wife uh, comes uh, through the door uh, where we started there. Yeah. So she comes through, she says, hey, people are talking about you on Twitter. Mm. So I said to her, People talk about me on Twitter all the time. It's, it's normal. She says, eh, eh, but this one is a bit different. Mm. So close your laptop and look at what I'm what I'm showing. Yeah. <clears throat> when I check, hey, 
it's this strange organization uh, it is saying i must be investigated for giving a racist lecture i'm a racist i'm dividing students mm. and so on and so on and in fact the guest like the, the the public lecture i'm going to give in the university tomorrow on african socialism yeah. must be cancelled and which organization is it, is this afri forum afri forum yeah right so afri forum is I, now i tend to forget their name sometimes yeah afri forum mm. yeah okay mm. so afri forum is now on your case yeah uh they've heard about this lecture you gave to the law students the guest mm -hmm. lecture and the lecture that's coming the next day they are now they are saying it must be cancelled hmm. so i wake up the next day now this is the day of the public lecture to the invest i yeah. get a call from the dean mm. um look what a wonderful manager man mm. of higher education mm. my dean has been very supportive sure and i that's all i wanted you sure. know just yeah. to be supported and be left alone mm. Mm. he provided that so he calls me that look um there's a lot being said about you yeah could you please come see me in my office so when I get to his office, it's him, it's the manager of teaching and learning and the HOD. Mm. The HOD didn't call me. It's the dean that called me. So I explained to him that, look, what, what, is, what AfriForum is saying is, is not true. Mm. This is the lecture I gave. These are the details of the lecture. Nothing's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Then I hear, so the lecture continued. It did not get canceled. So I went to the Sasko lecture. It was full. I gave the good lecture on African yeah. socialism. It was appreciated. Mm. Then the following day, some journalist from Netwerk on Volksbad, all these Dutch uh, publications, sends me a complaint letter written by Afrofora. And this publication, by the way, two, three, four days ago, published this story about me, including pictures of me. Mm pictures of me where i work where i stay which is in plomfontein mm -hmm. and plomfontein, plomfontein is very small mm -hmm. so if your pictures your office yeah. is in the publication and you are alleged to have said these dangerous mm -hmm. comments about mm -hmm. the population group you know how mm -hmm. in danger your life is yeah i've been living in fear from august up until now sure. every day uh, in in plomfontein mm -hmm. in fear for myself my children, my wife, my my entire family. Mm. And that newspaper still wants my comments. Yeah. I said, I'm not going to respond to them. I don't speak to racist, unethical journalists. So I refused. I didn't respond to them. But what shocked me, the complaint letter from Afri Forum was sent to the vice chancellor, the vice chancellor's office, mm. and he did not hesitate to say, I must be investigated according to this letter. That surprised me that because the vice chancellor is professor number one, mm. you know, it's your, it's your highest ranked scholar in the university, mm. whose first duty must be to defend his scholars mm. that he appointed. Mm. Scholars who are here to advance the academic project of this university, mm. right? So a complaint comes from a, an organization that was not even in my class. That, it, yeah, that is it's, external to the it's university. External, it's, it's not it, even in the university. It may university. have a branch or whatever. I don't know, but right. That that speaks to the autonomy of the university. Yes. That an external institution can spark an investigation just by making allegations. You know, and another thing is they they also claiming that uh, they've recorded the class. Mm. The class was one hour thirty minutes. Mm. Right. Even that is how do people from outside the university walk strangely into the university mm. into my class mm. and record me sure i mean just ethically speaking and the university would, allows that ethically speaking it would be nice to know when it's being recorded right i didn't even know that i was being recorded yeah. the, i don't record my classes sure i ask students to take notes mm. right mm. so professor number one gets a letter from afri forum Mm -hmm. A right-wing racist institution that has been recorded in many court cases about what it is, in many research publications about what it is. He does not hesitate, right, mm. to scrutinize the complaint, respond to it, decline it, because it is uh, making accusations that are false mm. 
accusations that are not scholarly about its own scholars in the uh, about the the university's scholars because complaint because that complaint has many bullet points but mm. bullet point number six says uh, the teaching of history must be uh, revisited there are nuances in history we mm. must not we must look we must look at both sides of apartheid so so can i uh, i mean yeah well let's not <laughs> um <laughs> I just want to make something mm. something clear here and and to clarify with you at any point in your teaching or at any point in your lectures mm. were you saying that the students had to agree with you were you saying that you held the only truth and it uh, was the truth and anyone who held a different view was was wrong look if there's one classroom where debates take place the most it is my class sure students debate my brother mm. because mm. i open that platform yeah you know i'm yeah. a i'm a i'm a paulo Freire advocate to the core sure the classroom must be a dialogue the classroom especially for sociology sociology mm. there must be emotions man mm. because mm. it is only from emotions we are going to understand what mm. racism is mm. and what it does to people uh, what is patriarchy and what it does to people sure you know so debate emotions is the best formula to learn and unlearn you know sure sure so my students know that mm. in fact um so, so 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 that complaint comes through yeah and it gets sent not to the faculty not to mm. a center for social justice mm, sure. it gets sent to human resources mm -hmm. hr mm. i don't know what competency hr has to investigate a lecture on colonization mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> as so, well and and it just shows you mm. what is the thinking yeah at the top leadership about this about how to run a university sure. from the onset you know so now you <clears throat> having been suspended mm -hmm. and cleared you're now re under investigation uh, reinvestigated afresh yeah. yeah so i go to hr to explain the lecture mm. so i explain to them okay good morning hr mm, yeah lovely to be here <laughs> nice to see you nice yeah. to see you <laughs> what is colonization yeah colonization firstly it's uh, the categorization of the body right where you place people into different categories of humanity where at the top you have human beings that are white people and then at the bottom you have subhumans that are black people because colonization begins at the body. You've got to racialize body so that people believe that to be black is to be non-human, to be white is to be human. These are Walter Mignolo and Sabel and uh, scholarship. Sure. Not only is colonization racial, but it is also gendered first uh, as well. Mm. So to be a man is to be human. To be a woman is to be subhuman right now once you've racialized society in that way you then craft a system to govern it so the system of racial capitalism then governs this racialization and gendering you've done to the body racial capitalism means therefore those you've declared subhuman are the ones you're going to enslave are the ones you're going to dispossess and they are the ones you're going to subject to a permanent life of being laborers those who are white who are human they own land they own the means of production they are human this categorization of the world is the categorization of the world today it's not something that expired some many years ago in fact i've been listening to this podcast mm. many guests mm. have come here at different levels of thinking sure and what you commonly see is this overestimation of 1994 mm. Mm. right that 1994 was some kind of a breakthrough it wasn't 1994 was sort of the 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 the, the colonial regime now rearranging how it is going to continue its process of colonization but at a different terrain so 1994 they decided no we're going to move now from the physical space of oppression where we say here's a billboard whites only uh -uh, let's move from that one sure let's move now to the invincible spaces let's move to policies 
let's move to institutions, let's move to knowledges. But most importantly, let's move into the minds mm. uh, of a people. So that is why you find that in the of the free state, for example, a colonial white institution. 1994, black people moved into the institution, mm. right? To create the illusion in us that it has now changed. Mm. Mm. Like we have black students now, they have a black top management, we have changed. But when you are there as a student or as a staff member, you, you get to feel that no man, the way this institution moves, mm. the way I feel, the way I'm treated, sure. the epistemic direction of this place, mm. you know, mm. uh, the hostility, the hostility of the place, it might have black faces, mm. but institutionally and structurally, it yeah. remained the same white colonial institution mm. it was. And that's that's so, so profound and important mm. because that's replicated across so many different institutions in our country right now. And I think the intellectual task we face is to be able to articulate that and mm. re-articulate that in ways that resonate. But whether you're talking about schools, mm. businesses, universities, uh, churches, yes, um, community organizations, mm. living spaces, living spaces, changing the demographics may be one thing, mm. and even then, there's a differential change in demographics. It's not the the, the demographics of power always come last. Yeah, and and, yeah. and the direction of change is one sided. Mm. You know, mm. so they say, they will say no in the suburb. We are multiracial, we have integrated mm. because it's since 1994. Mm, mm, mm. But it's movement in one direction. It's sure. black people moving into white institutions. Yeah. yeah. After 94, there's no white person who moved to mm. the township. Mm. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason yeah. for that. Yeah. So white people have remained in their racist cocoons, their racist corners. And you have only been invited into mm. this uh, into this uh, corner of mm. uh, of whiteness. Mm. And once you come inside, they then claim that I, we have yeah. now reformed, we have now changed. But there's also, just on that, there's mm. also a duty on those of us who go into those spaces to to articulate that in that space. Yeah, It's a very difficult duty, mm -hmm. but one thing I have been grappling with of late is when you get into that room mm. and you do have a voice, the hostility is so pressurizing that the temptation is to just yeah. toe the line. Yeah. And I think the generation before us did that. They, yeah. they got too scared. They got to the room uh -huh. and they did the hard work of getting into the room. But when they were there, mm. they were too scared to speak. Do you know why? It's cognitive domination, yeah. right? Whereby the corner system now moves into your mind mm. as a black person. You start thinking, I'm crazy. Yeah. If I speak, I'll be seen as this, you uh, know. So what black people do when they move into white institutions and they and they must now speak the truth mm. about what they feel as black people, mm. instead of saying things the way they are, instead of calling things by their names, they will find nice soft words of articulating yeah. their, their pay so that when it lands in the ears of whitey people and racists in the room, it does not make the whites in the room uncomfortable, mm. you know? So they self-oppress their souls in order to make whitey people feel comfortable, right? And that attitude you see it right across government, right Absolutely. across yeah. universities. Yeah. The yeah. more sophisticated and nuanced you sound as a black person, mm. the more far you are from the truth, the more the system loves you and it rewards you. So you get awards, you know, Bell Peace Prize, you become a professor, and 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 you parade yourself as this successful black. But deep down, we know that you are selling out black people because you're not speaking about their genuine concerns in their language, in their frustrations, sure. Sure, sure. the way they are, you know? I mean, look, it, it, it in some ways it gets mm. even worse to the extent that people don't even speak. Yeah. Or they they speak against and uh, and that's how yeah. the system and the violence at the University of the Free State is able to try for mm, so long. Mm, absolutely. Because many people warned me about the University of the Free State mm. that no, it's racist, it's oppressive, it's dangerous. When I got there, the problem is not as big as people think it is, mm, actually. Mm, the, mm. <laughs> the, 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 the enemy there is, 
Hi man, it, it, it's it's a miscult. It's not clever. Yeah. It's not a clever, and it can be removed mm. within with, within a second. Mm. The problem there is silence. Absolutely, it's the silence and the complexity of your own colleagues. Yeah, and that's they a, see yeah. injustice. Yeah. But they keep quiet. And they think keeping quiet is being neutral. Mm. And that's a really hard conversation we, we mm. all have to have with the people who are in those rooms. Yeah. Why 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 are we are we silent? Mm. Being quiet is not being neutral. Being quiet is to advance the status quo, mm. is to advance the injustice. Because yeah. had people inside revolted against this injustice that they see. The same way students have revolted, mm. we'll be having a completely different conversation mm. about that university. And yeah? and and the university would be a better place. That's that's the it would be it's not just revolt for the mm. sake of it's it's revolt so that students feel free to become themselves, mm. that they don't feel oppressed, that they can do better academically yes. because they're not worried about this hostility, that we can have mm. lecturers who can teach without being waylaid. By spurious mm. disciplinary charges. Mm. That can only be a good thing for education in South mm. Africa. And that is one thing the University of the Free State needs to understand. The, the future, a bright future for the university in South Africa is to strive to become a truly African university. An African university that recognizes human beings, that allows different thought, that allows decolonial scholars to coexist with all types of scholars in sure. the university. Sure that allows students from all backgrounds to come inside and feel welcome, right? They must see themselves in knowledge. They must see themselves in policies. They must see themselves in financial systems of this place. They must truly belong, you know? Mm. That is the university of the future. So yeah. allow the university to be accessed by poor, black, working class South Africans who mm. belong here. Mm. And that university will have a future. And don't target those who don't target who speak, them and white who speak for for that mm. for that future. Racism has no future. Yeah. Whiteness has no future. The, the, this so-called mentality of thinking that we can maintain white white islands mm. in Africa that mentality has no future, mm. right? So the future is to open up these institutions as areas. Uh, uh, of 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 opportunity. So sure. the investigation get, took place. I yeah. participated voluntarily. I participated as an employee in good faith. Yeah. I was confidential mm -hmm. because I was asked to be confidential sure. in the investigation. I mean, I can't believe how long you were effectively silenced. I was silenced. You know, I yeah. moved like the robot they want me to be. Yeah. Until Afri Forum released a media statement. Hmm. And that's when the whole thing blew up. Mm. Mm. When it blew up, I had to respond now. Sure. Because I've been quiet the whole year. Yeah. I had to respond because my name was being brought into disrepute hmm. for nonsense that I didn't do. Yeah. Right? And then when I responded in public, mm. then that's when the entire academic community yeah. saw what was happening. Absolutely. And rallied they to your defense. They rallied into my defense. But that it says, was amazing. That says to, so much, uh, Dr. Mzileni, because mm. this uh, targeting of people for speaking about racism and its effects and, and uh, gender inequality and its effects on our society mm. thrives under silence. Yes. It, it, it thrives in the dark. And as soon as the society finds mm. out about it, yeah. Suddenly, it runs away. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's an upper, it's an old mm. apartheid tactic. Mm. You know, the apartheid regime wanted to silence the media, mm. the journalists, mm. the scholars. Mm. Why? Because once these components start to talk about what is happening in South Africa yeah. to the whole world, the whole world will start to mobilize mm. against the nonsense because mm. apartheid is nonsense, mm. oppression is nonsense. Mm. Mm. So, in a university, when you say things must be kept a secret, you yeah. know you are wrong. And once society begins to have mm. an eye and see as yeah. the public what you are doing, yeah. you get to be held accountable. So and how did it feel to finally speak about what had Ooh. happened and, and get that support from, <laughs> I mean, there were world leading academics who came to your support. Yeah. Sabelo and Jovu Gajeni, who you were teaching, mm. even, you know, made a statement about, yeah. um, I saw you were welcomed with open arms by the likes of Dr. Loisi Lushaba. Like, Damn. People, mm. people came came to your aid. Uh, that must have been quite refreshing to know that yeah. you, know, you weren't operating alone this whole time. Yes. Look, it was amazing, man. Top scholars, mm. uh, Nomalanga Mkize, mm. Mm. Baba Olamakotwana, 
Kawe kazi makabuka, sibongile muthu mm. Andre Kit, uh Lwazo Lushaba. Mm. Mm. Even activists, you know that I speak to the likes of Velimbele, sure. Andy Limkritama, mm. yourself. Mm. Uh let me not forget my students. Mm. Ah. Wow. That must have been amazing. Yeah. Look, it made me emotional. Hey. The, the the one of the students. Yeah. yeah. They they just came out in in defense of me, my <laughs> family, the scholarship. That that, that it just It was unbelievable. That, I that mean, angers me, you know, like you you were you were doing your best to teach. <laughs> like that's what the South African university needs right now. And mm, mm. and you get there, you teach brilliantly and then you get sidetracked by all this this nonsense. This nonsense, man, you know. So the students man wow it was amazing from from them I mean these are 18 year olds mm. 20 year olds who are just concerned about what is going on mm. and they are mm. protesting mm. the EFF student command on campus SASCO on campus mm. the mm. SRC on campus sure. look I will never forget all of them mm. and the funny thing is as that support now was beginning to 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 yeah. ravage up yeah. another incident erupted in the university where mm. a student a white student mm. called a black student a baboon mm. this was in the agricultural natural sciences faculty now let's see now, now let's see I- i'm sure there was complete consistency eh, with this actual racist attack ah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure that person was suspended and Then? investigated ah. and silenced and yeah oh 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 so you can say that Oh, okay. Hey. I I give up. I actually give up sometimes. <laughs> this this country. What what is that animal farm thing again? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, some are equal than others. Ah, Look, just... man, my name was mentioned in public. I was lynched in public, mm, mm, right? Mm. Cuz I, I was treated that way because I'm a black academic. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you a simple question. Mm. Do you know till today? Mm. Do you know the student who called the white student mm. called that black student a baboon by their name i'm ashamed to say i don't you you don't know them yeah because white people who yeah. do wrong things are invincible yeah absolutely right. all kinds of excuses and institutional mechanisms come out there must be legal process mm, there must mm, be evidence mediation there must be mediation yeah, yeah. what are, ah, those things are not given but if me. you if you teach about the historical fact of colonialism suspension on the spot i'm not a racist i teach about racism for sure. the difference right a yeah. racist is an idiot a teacher is a scholar yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a doctor which is what yeah. i am you know so there's a difference between the two so But they don't comprehend no absolutely absolutely mm. so investigation wh- yeah. wh- what happens in the end with with uh, the investigation so i get investigated and as expected they found nothing so again again yeah so tune in <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but now in communicating to the public about the outcome of me being exonerated mm, mm, mm. the same energy now that was there mm. when i was being complained about yeah. and, char- and charged is not the same anymore yeah so they just release a long statement about the spring box you know going to the world cup and then there's mm. a small sentence that the academic who was investigated yeah. has not been found to have committed his speech one sentence sure yet during the onslaught yeah. they brought my name into disrepute in all these things and that's mm. a funny thing about universities mm. when someone brings a university into disrepute yeah. they lynch that person sure but when you mm. are being brought into disrepute mm. by a university mm. suddenly the tables are, 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 mm. are different you mm. know mm. so they found nothing wrong yeah they've after finding nothing wrong yeah they refused to give me the report of the investigation what so i don't know what was being said uh, or what was the reading of the investigation how do you not get a report that's about you yeah you know, the primary person investig- i didn't get the report i don't even know what i must now do differently yeah. next year Yeah. or must what must as a strategy what must we do as a university mm. differently for these things to not be reported again yeah. in future so i've not been given a report uh two the misconduct of white students who record black lecturers without their permission mm. 
is a conduct that has not been condemned. Mm -hmm. You have white students who don't want to be taught about racism. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. teach racism, they go tell their parents. Yeah. And then their parents, they come and interfere mm. uh, with the duty that we are employed mm. to do mm. Mm. as sociologists, as scholars. Yeah. That behavior is not condemned. Mm. That behavior has not been underscored or whatever. Mm. And I'm saying some students deliberately because there are white students in my class yeah. who love what I do. Sure, absolutely. You know? Absolutely, yeah. And there, and there may be black students who disagree with your the, views. Exactly. There may be black students who disagree with what I do. Yeah, or, you know? or, 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 or the, so, the, the perspectives you give to... And here's a painful students. thing, Cesar, about this report not being given to me. Yeah, yeah? No, that just... Is that when I apply one day maybe to be a professor sure. at my career university, mm, mm. they are going to say to me, Bro, yeah. we see that you are being investigated mm, here. Mm. Where's what, the report? What happened? Yeah. What happened? I have nothing to give my career university. Mm, mm. So it means I'm stuck yeah. in my career, right? Yeah, having of, been exonerated. Having been exonerated. But you don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no report in front of me, yeah, right? No, no. They think I'm going to screenshot the report or mm. target the names of the student that are written there, which is mm. the most stupid thing ever. It what? even embarrasses yeah. them as the employer because I'm an employee who knows what is confidential. Yeah. And what is for my business? And my my you know? my response again to that is: What are they afraid of? What are they this afraid is a of? public institution uh, conducting a spurious investigation. Yeah, I would I would suggest it should be public knowledge. Sure, you can redact certain parts of it, but I would actually like to see what what this public institution is doing. Is doing, yeah, yeah. So, the Human Rights Commission sent me a letter last week saying, "Am I told?" We are investigating no, you for no. that lecture. So we're now going to round three, right? So wait, l let me get this. <laughs> let me get this straight. It's not over. <laughs> you gave a lecture on colonialism and racism mm. and the constitution. Yeah. A constitution which guarantees your freedom of expression, by the way. Mm. You were investigated for that. Yeah. Found... I, I mean, exonerated. Yeah. Um, and now, what, AfriForum complained to the Human Rights Commission? Yeah. After the university exonerated you? Yeah. Same okay. complaint word to word. Yeah. It's now with the South African Human Rights Commission. And, 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 and the Human Rights Commission is entertaining this or, or what? Believe it or not, they are entertaining it. They are entertaining that frivolous complaint you saw there. So I'm expected to deliver a response to the South African Human Rights Commission before the end of November. And I've written to the, to the university saying two things. One, now that you've exonerated me in your internal investigation. Mm, which I haven't seen, yeah. Which I haven't seen. Mm. Can you now support me Absolutely. as your employee yeah. and as my employer mm. who gave this lesson as a lecturer doing duty in a university, yeah. can you support me to respond now to the South African Human Rights Commission? In other sure. words, let's tackle now the South African Human Rights Commission as a university, mm, mm. right? And obviously, if you will support me, give me the report. Because mm. how am I going to respond to them yeah. without the, the Absolutely, report, yeah. you know? They have not yet responded to to mm. that at the time of speaking now. Yeah, yeah. And let me tell you something, Sizu. Mm. If I don't get this support, mm. even after all the things that I've explained in this yeah. in this in this interview, yeah. to show my dedication to my job and my innocence. Mm. You know, if I don't get this support, I'm not sure about my future in that university. I mean, and this is not a statement of surrender. They mustn't yeah, think yeah. that uh, I'm saying this because mm. I'm afraid of them mm. or I want to, to run away. No, mm. hell no. I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned about waking up every day, yeah. leaving my family behind to go give my utmost best mm. and dedication in a classroom for an employer that doesn't give a damn about me. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, what you've been through is just unimaginable. Mm. And 
the lack of support, the 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 isolation, uh, the intimidation, yeah, the persecution. Um, you've got Afri Forum on the one hand, who 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 seem they've they've decided we're going for you, and mm. it doesn't matter how many times we get proven wrong, we're going to take you and divert your time and your energy and your resources. Um, and and universities, whether it was AfriForum or the EFF, quite frankly, mm-hmm. if lecturers are being targeted for the teaching they do, mm-hmm. the university has to stand up for the autonomy of the institution, for yep. academic freedom, and prevent this because what what happens to the next black lecturer who comes into the university yeah. if if they have the bravery to go through all of this mm. the the end goal is to create a climate where people are just too too afraid to even to even try that's that's the objective is to create this place that eliminates those who think differently mm. you know mm. The, 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 the objective yes, is, is let's kill imaginations. Yeah. Let's kill the power of a young person to mm. think in alternatives. Mm. You know? mm. So there must be one type of knowledge being sent to students. Yeah. And that is white neoliberalism. They must only absorb this tunnel of knowledge. Anyone who comes in with a different thought, mm. decolonization, socialism, transformation, you know, Global South studies, mm. anything different, anything that has to do with teaching and prioritizing black people and the poor in South Africa, that vision must be crushed. There must only be one tunnel of seeing life. You know, you, you also see this across the world. Mm. You know, if you if anyone seeks to interpret the UK, the Ukraine Russian war differently, crush them. Sure, sure. If anyone thinks for the Palestinian people crush them, right? If Cuba wants to govern its people with socialism, put sanctions on them so that the whole world can see that anyone who tries to do something different from neoliberalism, there are consequences for it, you know? And what that thing also does, it's a tool of social control. It's a tool of social engineering. It, 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 it conditions students that for me to graduate here, I must behave a particular way. I must be silenced. I must have these graduate attributes. Mm. I must be attractive to the market. Mm. And these so-called graduate attributes, employability, these are all tools of social engineering and social control to make young people think in one tunnel, to make sure that young people don't revolt against injustice. Basically, to create laborers, not citizens, you know? And South Africa needs citizens, citizens that are critical about the public good. And that is what we are lacking uh, uh, in this country. People will think differently, but also people will have compassion, love, humility, and appreciate the need for justice for black people because they deserve it. You know, those are the things we lack uh, uh, in this society. And instead of universities being terrains that enable these thoughts, they are instead crushing them. And we must oppose that as decolonial scholars. Well, Dr. Mzileni, uh, I think that's where we're going to have to leave it. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to say, I hope everyone watching this show will follow what happens uh, with your case uh, and and this investigation at the Human Rights Commission Mm -hmm. um, and your career thereafter. I hope you know, you know, uh, the support you have and and understand how shocked um, so many of us were to hear what you've been through. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just remember that you've played a crucial role in the history of our higher education institutions uh, by standing up, by being so resolute and uh, I hope this is not the last conversation um, that we have on this no, platform. Definitely. Um, but uh, just to just to salute you for you know mm. all you've been through and the work you continue to do. Mm-hmm. No, thank you so much, uh, Cesar, for this opportunity. And uh, I wish your your podcast uh, all the best. And uh, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, man, thank you so much for listening to me and giving this opportunity. Tabulel. Natsia Bulela, Dad. Aye, aye. Like, share, subscribe, 
and comment below.